What is up, you guys? Why is my camera so low? There we go. I think that's better. Yep. Uh, welcome to the Daily Raw, everybody. Episode 210. And for those of you guys that do not know, the Daily Raw is a show that I do on Tuesdays through Fridays at about 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And it's mostly an opportunity for you guys to hop on and ask your raw feeding and fresh food related questions. I do my best to answer them. And if I can't answer them, then I try to send you somewhere that can answer them. Now, we also generally cover a topic on the Daily Raw. And today, because of a couple of different discussions that I saw happening in the Facebook group, Raw Feeding 101 Learn to Feed Raw, if you're watching this over on YouTube or the Facebook page, uh, discussing ratio diets for puppies, 80 10 10 for puppies, all that stuff. I figured it was time to revisit this topic again. We've covered it a couple of times, but new people come into the raw feeding space, the raw feeding community, the raw feeding world, whatever you want to call it, all the time. Let me adjust this microphone here. And sometimes it's worth covering these subjects more than one time because it's very, very important. And the discussions that I saw going on today, and I have seen over the past, you know, couple of weeks, it always happens, but for some reason, the last couple of weeks, it's really been going on. Um, <clears throat> and that is this idea of feeding 80, 10, 10, or ratio diets to puppies. Okay. And as a former 80, 10, 10 feeder that even fed 80, 10, 10 to one of my puppies, I only fed 80, 10, 10 to one of my puppies, to be clear, before I knew any better. And all the way up until um, 20, 2018, towards the end of 2018, after I published the, the Raw Feeding 101 book, I was still doing ratio diets, but I've since learned better. And so therefore, it's my job to help you guys on the YouTube channel, in the Facebook group, on the Facebook page, everywhere else, get the most accurate information that I have to give you. So the bottom line is that feeding ratio diets to puppies, particularly strict 80-10-10 PMR diets to puppies, is a horrible idea. It's a horrible, 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 harmful idea. Okay? And we're going to talk about why, and I'm going to show you exactly what an 80 10 10 diet looks like for a puppy as far as nutrient deficiencies go and all kinds of other problems that come along with it okay so that's what we're going to talk about today and really quickly just so you guys know who the heck is talking to you for those of you who don't know my name is scott i started this website right here it's called rawfeeding101.com that's where the balanced meal plans are both the standard and the speedy ones uh, the boot camps both the one-on-one -on -one and the group uh, the course consultations free guides uh, the equipment and supplement store all that's over there on the website so especially if you're a beginner make sure you go check out rawfeeding101.com especially the free guides it'll answer so many of your beginner questions so let's get our chats brought up and make sure that they are working and then we're going to start covering this topic that you know needs to be addressed again because it's you know as somebody that people take advice from it is my responsibility to make sure that you guys have the most accurate information possible <clears throat> Uh, Brandy over on the Facebook group is saying, hello, glad I'm not working and could catch you live. You sound better. Hopefully you're feeling better, my friend. I do feel better and I am better. So I don't know what Tuesday, Tuesdays for the last couple of weeks have just been that day where I'm just not feeling great, I guess. Um, <clears throat> Rachel Odessa is here saying, aloha, Scott. What's going on, Rachel? I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi just to make sure. <clears throat> but okay, let's like dive right into this thing. Because here's the problem with feeding ratio diets to puppies, particularly, specifically in this example, 80-10-10 strict PMR diets, which so many people are still to this day for some reason um, saying that it's totally fine for puppies. Now, the people that just don't know any better because they're just getting into raw feeding and that's what they heard, that's one thing. You know, All that you're doing is sharing the best information that you have at that point. This part that kind of irks me a little bit is the people that are aware of the ways to 
you know, at least scientifically, properly feed puppies goes, still completely ignore it and just say, forget all that stuff. They're just making it more complicated than it needs to be. Just feed your puppies 80, 10, 10, and it's going to be fine. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at this, shall we? Let's take a look at this. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen here. And I'm going to share a software that I use, which is the same software that I show the boot campers how to use, whether it's in one on ones or on boot camps or group boot camps. And the same software that I use when I am making meal plans for people. OK, but I have to give you a little bit of a disclaimer here. OK, and the people like Brandy that are in the chat right now that have gone through one of the boot camp programs will be able to confirm what I'm about to say to you. Don't go and download the software and start using it without someone showing you how, whether it's a friend uh, that uses it, whether you go through the boot camp, whatever it happens to be. If you can't find someone to show you how to use the software, don't go download it and start using it. The chance is very, very likely that you will do more harm than good with it. So with that small disclaimer there, let's go ahead and share my screen. And just so that you guys know, I won't be able to see your comments for a second because I've got Pet Diet Designer now covering the comments. So let's dive into this, okay? And I'm going to do this so you guys can see more of what I'm doing. Now, what we are looking at here is two different setup examples of 80-10-10 diets for a 50-pound dog that is six months old and is a German Shepherd. And how this was set up, <clears throat> excuse me, and how this was set up was using the feeding based on current weight way of doing 80 10 10 diets which is slowly going from 10 percent as they're like eight weeks old all the way to uh the standard two to three percent when they reach their adult stages okay and about with that feeding style at about six months old they should be getting at about six percent of their current body weight so that's what this is set up for just so you guys know okay it's a 50 pound six month old german shepherd Okay, and they're being fed 6% of their current weight, not a projected adult weight, 6% of their current weight. Okay, now let's take a look at this. So right now on this list of foods, and I wish that I could make it bigger for you guys, but I just can't, it just doesn't work that way. Um, no, that won't work either. Yeah, I'm sorry this isn't bigger, so I'm gonna tell you guys what's on here. This is based, This is pork shoulder right here, just boneless pork shoulder with a little bit of fat on it. This is basically beef roasts, okay? This is chicken wings with the skin on. This is chicken drumsticks with the skin on. This is beef liver, and this is beef kidney. Now, you're going to notice here that there are a couple of different numbers. We've got 2.4 ounces and 2.4 ounces for both liver and kidney because that follows the 80-10-10, the 5-5, right? 80-10-10 or 80-10-5-5, which according to those calculators says 2.4 ounces is that 5% of the 50 pounds, okay? Now next, we've got our drumsticks, which is going off of 4.8 ounces of actual bone, not the total weight of the bone content, but 4.8 ounces of actual bone, which again is what the calculators would tell you to do for the drumsticks. Now for the wings at that 4.8 ounces, it would be 10 and a half ounces because there is more, there's about 46% bone in wings and about 27% bone in drumsticks. So it takes more of the drumsticks to meet that 4.8 ounces of solid bone content than it does for the wing that has a higher uh, bone percentage. Then for both the meat portion examples here that we've got, which is the pork and the beef, we've got 38.4 ounces, which is that 80, um, 80% <clears throat> of that 6% of their 50 pound bodies okay so let's take a look at this if we say first off that we're going to choose pork chicken wings 
and then our liver and our kidney, our liver and our kidney are going to stay the same, okay? So we've got selected the 38.4 ounces, the 80% of pork. We've got the 10%, which is the 10.5 ounces of chicken wings. And we've got the 2.4 ounces for both the liver and the kidney, which is the 5% and the 5% or combined the 10% of 80-10-10. So let's take a look at how bad this is. <laughs> uh, number one, we don't have enough EPA and DHA. We just don't. It's at 66% of the recommended amounts. And by the way, I guess I should tell you guys, this is based off of NRC's feeding standards, okay? <clears throat> we don't have anywhere near enough calcium. So this dog might be looking at bone development issues or growth plate development issues. All kinds of issues can be associated with calcium, but most people associate it with bones. We don't have enough phosphorus here. We don't have enough iron here. We don't have enough zinc here. We don't have enough manganese here. And we have virtually zero iodine, which iodine is very, very important for proper thyroid function. And from what several veter veterinarians have told me, once your dog starts having thyroid problems, it can very commonly lead to you know lifetime medication required. We don't have enough vitamin E. We don't have enough vitamin K. And that's just the percentages of the nutrients that they need a day. Their calcium and phosphorus ratios are off. The EPA and DHA does not look great. LA and ALA, which is linoleic acid and alpha linoleic acid, stuff you get from seeds and seed oils, not great. <laughs> uh, you're at 12.2% fat, which is not bad. It's a little teeny bit high, but it's not bad at all. It's a good, I'd, I'd feel comfortable feeding that fat percentage. And here's another big, big problem. With these amounts, with this dog at this weight, this dog is 800 calories over their daily recommended amount. So the dog's going to start getting chubby, <laughs> turn into a beach ball with a nose, but they're going to be nutrient deficient in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different nutrients here. We're not even going to look at stuff that's high in this example. And then we have a bunch of their ratios all screwed up the fat's fine but they're 800 calories over so this is not good <laughs> now what if we take this chicken wing with the pork still remove the chicken wing and do the drumstick instead we have the same problems we don't have enough epa and dha calcium phosphorus iron zinc manganese iodine vitamin e vitamin k and our ratios are all screwed up our fat percentage is still fine at 10.7%, and we are now 956 calories over, almost 1,000 calories over this dog's daily recommended amount. Again, big, big problems. So now let's take a look <clears throat> at our beef and chicken wing, okay? Now we don't have anywhere near as much of a, a calorie surplus problem. We're only 66 calories over, which isn't that big of a deal. So let's take a look at everything else. We don't have enough ALA, so that's a new one we haven't seen before. We don't have enough EPA and DHA. We don't have enough calcium still. We don't have enough phosphorus still. We don't have enough iron, manganese, iodine, vitamin D, vitamin E, or vitamin K. So there's new things popping up this time that we don't have enough of. This has enough zinc in it, because beef has more zinc in it than pork does. But still, again, big problems. Our ratios are all screwed up. We have 66 calories remaining or over, which is not a big deal. But our fat's at 6.2%, which is ridiculously low. It's way too low. Fat is responsible for so many things, including proper hormone production, on and on and on. So this is not a diet that I would feed to a puppy. Even if everything else was perfect and I looked at this fat percentage and it said 6.2%, I would not feed it to my dogs and I would not hand it to one of my meal plan clients and I would not let one of my boot camp clients make this meal and say, I'm ready to go feed it. I'd say, no, we need to fix your fat. So that's the beef and the chicken wing. What about the beef and the chicken drumstick? Pretty much the same problems. 
We've got all kinds of missing nutrients, EPA and DHA, calcium, phosphorus, iron, manganese, iodine, vitamin D, E, and K. Our ratios are all screwed up. EPA and DHA ratio actually doesn't look bad here, but the percentage of the overall amounts of EPA and DHA is still not there. We're 214 calories over, which we're starting to get into your dog turning into a beach ball with a snout territory again. And the fat on this is even worse. It's 5.4%. So what is the point that I'm trying to make here? <laughs> the point, and we'll go at least over to this so you guys can see me. The point that I'm trying to make is that a lot of people want to say that feeding 80-10-10 diets is fine for puppies because that's what wolves eat. Wolves eat bones and meat and organs. Well, that very well may be true. But if you've actually ever looked into it, the stomach contents of wolves that have passed and they've examined have had a whole lot more than just those things. The point being here is that if we are using nutritional standards like AFCO or NRC, which again in this example we're using NRC, the cold hard data that we're looking at right now is showing us how bad a diet like this is for a puppy. It is just not appropriate at all. Now, I'm fine with very temporary 80-10-10 transitions for adult dogs. That's fine. As long as you are ultimately and as quickly as possible and as quick as, as quick is as possible for that dog, you are going to get to some kind of AFCO or NRC balance, then that's fine. But it is just not appropriate for puppies. It's not. So <clears throat> I know and I completely understand, again, as a former... 80 10 10 ratio diet feeder i totally understand that it is more difficult and there's more steps to be taken if you are going to feed balanced at home and you're not going to do pre-mades i get that trust me i still remember back in 2018 going holy cow i can't believe that this is that these diets are this deficient this is going to be a lot more effort and work on my part now, that being said, it's really not that big of a deal. If you're already doing 80-10-10 meal preps, if you're already putting all these different things into a container and freezing them, putting a couple of other things into that container and then adding a couple of supplements when they're eating at the actual time of feeding really isn't that different. It's not going to take that much more time. The only difficult part is finding out what these other things to feed are. There's all kinds of solutions for that. We make meal plans on Raw Feeding 101. Ronnie makes meal plans on Perfectly Raw Some. Dr. Kozier makes meal plans on Healthy Dog Workshop. And there's so many more people out there. There, I, I understand that it, it's a lot more daunting at first than just 80-10-10 is. I get that. But as one of the people in this community that people take advice from, I feel like it's my responsibility to give you guys the truth, the real information, not just a comment from a random person in a Facebook group. Here is the data. Here is the science, the numbers that is repeatable over and over and over again. Because a lot of the time what happens is people just hear something in a Facebook group and then they start saying it over and over again. And they feel like they're being personally attacked if you say, I don't think that 80 10 10 is appropriate for puppies. I, I'm, I'm not trying to personally attack anybody. Like I've said, I've done it. I've done it. I got lucky and he didn't develop with any serious uh, physical issues. I got really, 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 really lucky. So again, the point, please, 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 no matter what you hear from, I don't know, Mr. or Mrs. or whatever raw feeding master in the Facebook group that says this is what wolves eat and so feeding your puppies nothing but 80-10-10 is completely acceptable. I would challenge them to show me the same kind of thing. Show me your data for it because I'm up here willing to show you mine. I'm saying here's the data, here's the numbers, here's the science. So I would challenge them to do the same thing. If you truly feel that it's that balanced and meets all of these nutritional standards and that nothing is missing and there's no nutrient deficiencies, show me something equivalent to this. 
The real answer is they won't be able to, but please, please, please do not feed your puppies ratio diets. There's so many options, so many learning opportunities, uh, so many resources, so many different services, pre-mades, all kinds of things that will allow you guys that are beginners that have puppies to get them onto a balanced diet so that you don't have any one of these versions of a disaster of a diet that we looked at here today. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up our comments and see if we've got any comments going here. <clears throat> and hopefully that sunk in. It, it's not my bummer. It's it's not, not my bummer. <laughs> it's not my purpose to make anybody feel bad if they're doing it right now or to you know, scare someone away from raw feeding because they think that it's going to be this impossible task because it's really, really not. It's just like anything else. In the beginning, it seems really overwhelming, but it's really not that complicated. Pre-mades, it's, you know, follow the label, feed how much it says and make sure that it's complete and balanced, uh, meets or exceeds AFCO standards and is suitable for all life stages and you're done. If you are a total beginner and you want to feed DIY, have someone make you a meal plan, whether it's me, Ronnie, Dr. Kozier, any one of the other thousand people out there that do it. And then just follow the list like it's a cake recipe or something like that. It's really, really not that hard. So don't be, you know, don't feel attacked if you're doing it right now. I'm just trying to give you guys the information so you can keep your puppies as healthy as possible for as long as possible. And don't be scared away from raw feeding because of this. Because it's really, really, really not that complicated. Just don't listen to the keyboard warriors in the Facebook group that think 80-10-10 is fine and is completely suitable for puppies because that's what wolves eat. Ugh. I, my brain, every time I hear that, because that's what wolves eat, it makes me want to like, bleh. <laughs> uh, but let's see what our comments are saying. Let's see what our comments are saying. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, Sandy, another one of my boot camp clients who can tell you it's really not that complicated, you guys. It's really not. Sandy's saying, hey, friend, hope you're feeling better. I am. Thank you very much. Cheryl King, another, she's one of my Canadian um, boot camp clients, is saying, hi, Scott. So glad to catch you live for a change. Hello. It, it's nice to see you. It's nice to see you. I haven't seen you for a bit. Um, Brandy, another one of the bootcamp clients, has said, Scott is not wrong about PDD. LOL. Don't do it without help. I had to learn. I had to figure it out for myself, and it took a year. It took a year before I started using it for meal plans and boot camps and stuff. It's kind of a nightmare to figure out on your own. Um, Karina is saying, we fully start answers tomorrow. Excellent. Excellent. Um... Karina is saying, is it bad that we've been using 80, 10, 10 for two weeks? He is 10 weeks. I feel, so, don't, she says, I feel terrible. Don't feel terrible. All that you were doing is the best that you knew how to do, right? I fed 80, 10, 10 in ratio diets for years, years. And it's because that's the best that I knew. So don't feel terrible. And anybody out there that is watching now live or they're watching the replay of this, I don't want you feeling terrible either. All that you were doing was the best that you knew how to do. My purpose here and my purpose overall with rawfeeding101.com, the RF101 Facebook group, YouTube channel, everything is to give you guys better information, more accurate information and healthier, safer information as I learn it. And that's what I'm doing. So now that you guys know better, like Rodney says this all the time, now that you guys know better, you can do better. So don't feel bad. Don't feel terrible. And no, your dog is going to be fine on an 80 10, 10 for two weeks. I'm not saying you guys should use that as an excuse to go do it. But if you're doing it now and you're going to make an immediate effort to get yourself balanced out, I don't want you feeling guilty or bad. And I don't want you worrying about your dog's overall health and well-being. <laughs> um, let's see here. Heidi Kim Wu is saying, I can no longer give ultra oil sardine, anchovy and hemp seed oil or seeds, nuts, etc. She's intolerant to pretty much everything. Can wheatgrass be used instead? She can have mackerel. Yeah, you can use mackerel. Mackerel is a good source of phosphorus. Uh, if the bones are in it, it's a good source of calcium too. Vitamin D. Um, as far as your seeds and seed oils go, 
you'd have to, what I would do is look at the seeds specifically that they are sensitive to, because all those seeds are going to have good levels of ALA, the alpha, alpha linoleic acid. Um, and that's the whole point of feeding seeds and seed oils is to get more of that ALA. So that's what I'd do. Mm. Stephen Robles is saying, I'm super worried my dog has all of a sudden stopped eating any pre-made I give to him. To trick him, I'm mixing farmer's dog food with one patty of answers. If he won't eat, I give him carnivore. Uh, Koa, Koa is eight months old. Picky dogs are hard, Stephen. Uh, if you haven't already, go to Ronnie's group, Raw Feeding University. Go into the events section. Change it to past events past events and watch the two um picky eaters videos that she did it's a i think a small white dog with a bright pink background part one and part two so it's it's kind of impossible to miss <laughs> um <clears throat> vivian ola is saying i feed 80 10 10 beef for my puppy what am i missing i don't know what all these codes mean i found i found what i could afford she's six months old and we we're in canada we found a farm that is well priced. So the biggest, biggest problems that you're going to have. And honestly, if it's a pre-made, even if it is a simple 801010 pre-made, you might be able to feed to straight DIY for less money than you're paying for your pre-made, depending on what it is. But your biggest issues are going to be not having enough calcium and phosphorus. You're going to want to add some kind of a fish oil to get enough EPA and DHA or fishies or both fish oil, fishies, sardines, mackerel, that kind of a thing. Your iron is going to be tough. If it's a puppy, you're either going to want to make your kidneys spleen, which you can't really do if you're feeding a pre-made. So in that case, I would feed an iron supplement like Solger's uh, gentle iron, the 25 milligram do one capsule a day. Uh, on average, obviously I don't know exactly if I've never met your dog or seen your dog. Uh, manganese is a big other one that you're missing a lot. You can use ground ginger spice. You can use muscles like blue muscles and green lipped muscles. Um, <clears throat> zinc is another big one. You can do that with supplementation or you can do that by adding oysters into the mix. Uh, iodine is missing all the time. And the easiest way to do it is to add a capsule or two, depending on your dog's iodine needs, uh, a couple of the 150 microgram, 150 MCG, now kelp tablets. Um, <clears throat> the other big ones are going to be vitamin D is not going to be a problem if you're feeding fish of any kind. But vitamin E, you're going to want to give a vitamin E oil supplement one drop a day, unless you have a huge dog, then maybe do two. Uh, and vitamin K. Vitamin K, it's all going to be about your veggies. Kale and spinach are my favorites, but you can also add stuff like broccoli and winter squash, uh, all kinds of stuff. But veggies is going to be your big vitamin K. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look here. Get caught up. Forever indebted to you, Scott, in this page says, Karina, we only want the best for our puppy. Going raw is the first step and the right diet is the best. Thank you. You are welcome, my friend. That's all that I'm here for is giving you guys good information, whether that's through these chats, whether that's through the Facebook group, whether that's through YouTube videos, the boot camps, meal plans, whatever it is, I'm just giving you guys the information or the tools to keep your puppies healthy. Um... Vivian says we've been doing that for three months so far. Add those things at least that you were talking about and really look at what it would take to source you source the ingredients separately and see if you could do it for cheaper because lots of pre-mades are more expensive than you need to be feeding, especially if you're going to go DIY. I give fish oil, a sardine with dinner, blueberries, and kefir with each meal. That's a good. That, that's good. The fish oil and your sardines are going to take care of the vitamin D, the EPA, and the DHA um, missing low fat percentages, depending on what's in your 801010. So those things are good. Um, Stephen Robles is saying thanks. You're welcome. Karina says, "How is DIY? How is DIY cheaper? It just doesn't seem like it is." So 
most of the time it's cheaper. Think about it like this. Like this is a perfect example. We had to use tin foil the other day for cooking. Um, I think we were barbecuing chicken in the oven or something like that. And at the convenience store, it's $8 <laughs> a roll and it's a really small roll and it's thin foil, right? <clears throat> it's $8. When you can go to the grocery store and get the good kind for a big roll that is thicker aluminum foil for like $2, maybe three. So really the reason that DIY is cheaper is because you're not paying for all the steps that are required to create a pre-made. Um, you're not making deals with different farmers markets or suppliers or farmers or whatever it happens to be. You're not buying equipment to process and create, or basically you're not paying for the equipment that pre-made companies have to buy to make it. You're not paying for the shipping costs that it takes to send all those things to you afterwards or send them to the stores, the pet stores, who then have to put a markup on it so that they can stay in business, which is totally fine. That's just what happens with pre-mades. Um, you're not having to pay for the costs associated with producing packaging and shipping materials. Uh, it's, you know, you're not paying for labor. You're not paying for what it takes to keep the people that work at the pre-made company employed or the owners or anything like that. Basically you're cutting out all those middle steps and just going, here's the source of food. Here's me. When with pre-mades there's, here's the source of food, all the stuff that it takes to get a pre-made to your store or to the internet for you to buy online and then finally to you so basically the short version is you're paying higher amounts and higher costs for convenience <clears throat> i have the pockets dog in the world oh the pickiest dog in the world have you tried blending it doing it in different bowls have you tried putting it in things like windpipes the list goes on and on pm me if you need ideas says steven there you go good call uh, Thor's dinner last night sent a pic. I would love to bring it up, but I got to get off of this chat here in a minute or else I totally would. Um, <clears throat> Jordan says, do you guys treat, vi treat vitamin K1 and K2 differently? When it comes to these, no, not really. And if you're getting it from a natural source, then it doesn't really matter, which is why I like feeding veggies for vitamin K instead of using supplements. The other reason that I like using veggies instead of supplements is a lot of the time the vitamin K supplements like K2 supplements are way more than your dog needs. Like 25 milligrams is some of the smallest stuff I've seen that's not mixed with something else and that's way, way more than your dog needs. Uh, Vivian's saying, thanks Scott, you're welcome. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Jamie says, I'm feeding bone-in chicken, organ meats, kidneys, gizzards, livers, along with the greens. The organ meats and greens get pumped through a grinder. I'm doing about 60 to 40 meat to mix. Also, an egg, coconut oil, and sardines. Now and again, they're five- and six-year-old. What are your thoughts on this diet? I would rewind back to the beginning and look at all the stuff that we were just talking about and see the stuff that you're not feeding particularly particularly what i was just saying to vivian and add those things that you're missing into that diet the only thing i'd say for you is that with it being adult dogs five and six adding the iron supplement isn't going to be necessary um let's see steven says yeah mixed with the uh, cooked farmer's dog he's been winning the plate war with my wife so we got a taste for human food i'll use carnivore kibble or he will eat the pre-made if I put whipped cream on it, uh, Katrina says, do you help with the whole diet, like the DIY plan and mixed proteins? So if you mean, here's, here's how the meal plans work. If that's what you're asking. So I think that's what you're asking. You give me all the information on your dog, your puppy, whatever, including stuff like what you can source, what you can't source, uh, the things that, you know, your dog is sensitive to the stuff that you're feeding your dog already. And I literally give you a list that says feed exactly this much of these different things every single day. And as long as you follow that exact list, then you're good to go. And when you say like mixed proteins, if you're talking about like buying pre-mades from companies, I can use those if they give it, if they give us the actual information that we need. 
because most companies just list the ingredients that are in it, not, not actually how much of those ingredients are in it, which is a big, big problem. So yeah, but it's not like every, or if you're saying by mixed proteins, by having more than one protein in a meal, that's going to happen every time, every time, <laughs> just naturally. Uh, and Michelle says he does it all. Thank you, my friend. Joanna says, thanks. You are welcome. And on that note, my friends, I'm going to bounce out of here. I got to go run an errand really quick, but again, repeat, do not go feed your puppies 80, 10, 10 diets. Don't do it. I don't care how convincing the person in the Facebook group comment section is. Okay. Until they can show you as comprehensible of a piece of data example like this, showing you how it is balanced and how it's not missing vitamin K, E, and D, iodine, manganese, iron, zinc, calcium, phosphorus, blah, 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 and isn't super low on calories or high on calories or super low on fat or high in fat. Until they can show you that stuff, listen to the science and the data and the standards that are out there, okay? Don't feed your puppies ratio diets. <laughs> please, please, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't feed your dogs ratio diets. Don't do it. Please, 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 don't do it. <clears throat> All right, you guys, well, we're going to get out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow for episode 211. Make sure that if you guys are looking to get into pre-maids, go check out the Raw Feeding 101's Facebook group's description. There's 11 different pre-maids in there for you to check out. Some are available in your area. Some aren't going to be. And if you're looking for meal plans like DIY, make sure you go check out rawfeeding101.com. Just go to the meal plan section in the main menu and we will get you taken care of. Or go to Ronnie or to Dr. Kosher or who the heck ever that knows how to do it and knows what they're doing. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for episode 211. I have no idea what we'll be talking about, but until then, go give your puppies and your kitties and your dogs and your cats and your other awesome pets some love from me. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for episode 211. Bye-bye. On to do. Oh, Dudu's asleep. Dudu's kicking his feet in his sleep. He's having a running dream. <laughs> <laughs>